There's a little piece of advice that's been going around in recent years, which is that we all need to be storytellers. We know that we've been telling stories since back when we were hanging out in caves. It's a great thing to aspire to, but how? The answer is you need to understand one thing, and that one thing is narrative. Narrative is everything. I realized this first as a scientist, then as a filmmaker. But the problem with narrative is that it can take a long time to grasp how important it is. Let me tell you a little story about how I first realized this. I made a movie called Flock of Dodos. It was about the controversy over the teaching of evolution versus intelligent design. We interviewed a bunch of creationists and scientists, and then I had a team of editors who began to put the footage together. And in the beginning, we assembled it as a series of segments. So we had a segment on evolution, segment on creationism, segment on intelligent design, one on school boards, one on Charles Darwin, on and on. And as we watched the movie week after week, my editors began to find it so painfully boring. Uh, it wasn't boring for me, I was interested in the material, and furthermore, this was my life's project. I had everything at stake with it. But to them, it just was boring. And we began to build more and more tension until finally, in the sixth week, uh, we ended up in a giant meltdown fight in the editing suite. I ended up throwing everybody out, locking the door, locking myself in for the next three days as I worked around the clock and slept on the couch and ordered in pizza and Chinese food trying to figure out what was wrong with this movie until it finally dawned on me, what if I built all the information around a single problem, the question of who was behind this intelligent design movement. As soon as I set it up that way and began to build this structure, all the other information focused on that central problem, it began to make sense and be much more interesting. And that's what is meant by narrative structure. When I brought it back to the editors, they loved it. They took it the final distance. We ended up premiering at a major film festival and it aired on Showtime for a couple of years. So that was my life altering experience with narrative. Since then, I've come to realize it's everywhere from sports to religion to politics, you name it, including science. I think the science world is getting better with communication. Uh, the real challenge that I have is, are we getting better fast enough? Okay, narrative structure is critical to telling a clear tale in science or in any communication. I've watched people take a whole bunch of facts and ideas and they kind of throw them together. It looks like a bowl of spaghetti. And then you say to them, let's, let's apply a little bit of structure to this. Let's think about the order in, the way in which we present it. And suddenly it untangles into one long, nice piece of string. There's a tale that goes from beginning, middle to end, and it's wonderful. Narrative is different. There's lots of different parts to communication. There's being able to use simple language, being able to express yourself in metaphors and analogies. Even improv acting training can be useful. But those are all elements of content. And narrative is about form, which is more important, but also can be a more difficult challenge. The word narrative is being used everywhere these days. What exactly does it mean? In Houston, we have a narrative. I offered up the simple definition of a narrative being the series of events that occur in the search for a solution to a problem. This problem-solution dynamic may be the strongest bridge between science and the humanities. And this means that the failure to grasp the power of narrative can be deadly. Senior voices in the science world are now recommending that scientists engage in storytelling. Even science popularizer Alan Alda urges scientists to storytell. In 2017, a scientific paper proclaimed narrative will make more people cite your work. But how to do this is the question. Let's begin by talking about what is not a story. As part of my training as a filmmaker, I went to film school at the University of Southern California. One of the real gems at USC Film School was Frank Danielle, a legendary expert on screenwriting. In a 1986 speech, he talked about first drafts of screenplays, but his words apply to first drafts of pretty much everything. He said, Monotony is a problem in first drafts. There are several reasons for it. One usually is the fact that the scenes follow in the forbidden pattern, and then, and then, and then. Notice what he identifies, this pattern of and, and, and. This is referring to just listing events or facts which can be numbing. 
My film school classmate Sean Hood, who's now a major screenwriter in Hollywood, remembers this problem from back when he was just getting started after film school. I'd go out and I'd pitch and I would, I'd sit down and I'd start telling my story and I could see the executive, uh, I could see her eyes just start to glaze over. I would lose them slowly through the pitch. This happened, then this happened, then this happened, and then this happened, and that's boring. He's talking about the and, and, and form. It happens to everyone including scientists who give a talk where they say, and here's a graph of this, and here's a graph of that, and here's a pile of data. When scientists are called to testify before Congress, they often march into those committee rooms thinking that if they show up with the right set of facts, they're gonna be able to win the day. But presenting only facts is the and, and, and form, which is a recipe for failed communication. That's a horrible thing to say, but the and, and, ands are quite forgettable. And I, so I, if you were to ask me some NNNs I've heard, I forgot them. I mean, that's one of the wonderful things about getting older. You can use that as an excuse. Somebody said, did you go to such and such a lecture? I don't remember. <laughs> All you have to do is go to any cocktail party, and the first five stories you hear are all going to be and, 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 and it's all about the me, 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 me of the person telling you that story. The core problem is what social psychologist Paul Slovic says, citing Daniel Kahneman, that the brain is lazy. The and, 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 or AAA is basically the default form. It's what we start with. Very easy to do, just rattle off pieces of information. And in fact, it's what happened with my movie. Our first draft, just as Frank Danielle would have predicted, was AAA structure. Now, it's not that there's anything wrong with this structure. So long as all the facts are accurate, it's fine. It's just that it's boring, and that's our problem. So what's the matter with AAA? It just doesn't excite. Neuroscience is beginning to shed some light on this. For example, Yuri Hassan of Princeton University uses functional MRI to study the brain activity of people watching films. One group watches films that don't tell a story. For this, they use video footage of random people at a park. There's no problem-solution dynamic at work. This is what AAA is. Here's some kids, and there's some trees, and there's a trash can, and nothing to focus on, really. With no story, two things are seen in the brain scans of viewers. Very little activity, and very little similarity in which parts of the brain are active from one person to another. The index of similarity is low, around 10 to 20 percent. One person is watching a car drive by, another might be watching people. Then they use footage from suspense stories. This is high narrative content, very clearly problem-solution material. He's got a gun, but it's pointed at someone. Therefore, we may be about to see something bad. Not surprisingly, there's lots of brain activity and the index of similarity is around 70% as everyone is thinking the same thought. Will he pull the trigger? This is the power of narrative. The problem-solution dynamic activates the brains of the audience and unifies their thinking. So how do you draw on this power? Actually, some people figure it out on their own. When I started lecturing students, I used to do the and, 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 I'd list and list and list. And in fact, in my early days, but clumsily but still by accident I started throwing in butts I started throwing in did you know there's this other crazy thing related to it and you see students going from this to that suddenly to more formally understand this transformation from boring to interesting we return to Frank Danielle's speech he went on to say in a dramatic story the pattern usually for the connecting scenes is and but therefore these are the ABT words they embody the three central forces of narrative, agreement, contradiction, and consequence. We like to color code them, blue for agreement, red for contradiction, green for consequence. The ABT is a one sentence template that conveys the core elements of narrative, whether fiction or nonfiction. For example, we can talk about the story of a little girl named Dorothy and her life on a farm, which is boring. But then one day a tornado takes her to Oz. Therefore, she has to find her way home. That's the ABT narrative summary of The Wizard of Oz. Or we could talk about a scientist who works on biochemistry and physiology, but has come to the realization that the important questions are at the molecular level, therefore is now doing the following molecular experiments. Once you absorb the ABT structure, you begin to realize it's present wherever there's effective communication, like the Gettysburg Address. 
It's only three paragraphs and a perfect ABT. We have a great and mighty nation, but now we're engaged in a terrible civil war. Therefore, it is up to us, the living, to make sure these men did not die in vain. Martin Luther King Jr. began his I Have a Dream speech with an ABT paragraph, and every day on the front page of the New York Times you see the ABT structure where paragraphs even start with the word but. Look for the ABT enough and you start to feel like it's everywhere. Learning about the ABT for the first time is like when someone tells you there's an arrow in the FedEx logo. Once you see it, you're never going to unsee it. The ABT really shows up everywhere. And now here's the clincher. Guess where I first learned of the ABT elements? from the co-creators of the animated series South Park. They talked about the power of the words but and therefore in a documentary. It's been the secret of their success over the years. So are scientific papers written this way? The answer is yes. Narrative structure already exists in the reporting of scientific research, and, and by definition it does, and there's, there's a well-understood formula for that and a structure. The structure is called IMRAD, and the scientific community came up with it around a century ago as a way of forcing the scientific community to use this narrative structure. So it goes, previous researchers have looked at this and this, but they haven't looked at this element before. Therefore, we had these methods, we found these results, and this is our discussion. After formulating the ABT, I took it further by creating the narrative spectrum for which the ABT is the optimal narrative form. To one side of it is one way in which communication goes bad, the dreaded AAA we've already discussed where the narrative content is zero and things become boring. At the other end is too much narrative content. We call this DHY, standing for despite, however, yet. Three words of contradiction. You sometimes get this form among academics who can talk on five narrative planes at once. Despite this, however this, yet this, but this, contrary to this. They can follow each other, but outsiders are totally lost. The ABT is both template and tool that can lead you to the real goal, what I've termed narrative intuition. The ability to sense narrative structure in all situations. Guess what you need to achieve this? Narrative structure can seem simple at first, but it takes a long time to master. As Christopher Vogler says, the journey to understand and articulate these ideas of narrative is truly endless. What this means is that everyone could benefit from narrative training. The version of it we've developed is called Story Circles. It has two parts. It begins with a one-day teaser event called a Demo Day, where up to 50 people are shown the basic elements of Story Circles. Out of that group are formed the story circles of five individuals who will meet for the 10 one-hour sessions, one per week. These can be held over teleconferencing or in person. Each hour is a set workout consisting of narrative analysis, analyzing the narrative structure of published abstracts, and narrative development, using the narrative tools and language to strengthen the narrative structure of their own research projects, writing, and presentations. After running four prototypes, we now have groups putting the training into practice. For example, research scientists at the U.S. Department of Agriculture. The rest of it is kind of DHY, despite however, <laughs> yeah. We started Story Circles with a small group of scientists, and there was some initial skepticism about it. The people came together. I don't think they quite knew what they were doing. And the thing that was surprising was that within this first couple of weeks, they were coming back to us and telling us how they had seen applications in the work that they were doing. But the results didn't happen immediately. It took a year of putting the training to work for them to really see the transformation. The great thing about Story Circles and the way it's run is it was run, we, we met every week for about 10 weeks. It was very uh, difficult. It was like going to practice. But I also am a musician and I recognize that you have to practice. You have to practice your scales. You have to practice your arpeggios. And by the end of the 10 weeks, I felt I got a lot out of story circles. But it wasn't until I was actually into this and using it for over a year that I felt like I really got it. Recently, we had to put together a project plan and usually involve a group of scientists standing together and saying, this is what I'm gonna do and how can I work together with everybody? And this was a very difficult project because we went from the molecular to the remote sensing. And I brought the ABT concept to the table. They were very frustrated. They were like, we don't have to do it this way. We just want to write it up. And it was terribly boring. It was horrible. We couldn't get it, but I always put 
the ABT in there. And the dilemma was, is this really adding anything to the story? And if not, it doesn't need to be in there. It's a sidebar. I don't need sidebars. You know, put the sidebar in a sidebar. And eventually people started coming around. And when we got evaluated, we got the top score. No revisions necessary. We were told it was one of the best project plans ever written. Yes, the training does take time. You can't learn it all in a day, but it's worth the investment. So in Australia, we have this saying, um, you don't want to be that guy that's too busy digging a hole with a spoon that he won't go over and pick up the shovel. This is what Heidi Kuntz, a USGS graduate of Story Circle, said at the end of their circle, that, quote, the hour per week dedicated to flexing ABT tactics is indeed helping me find more time in my schedule. That's what happens when you pick up the shovel. So we interviewed graduates of Story Circles from USDA and USGS in Fort Collins, Colorado, for their thoughts on the training. I found I was an and, an and, an and, an and type of scientist. It started in ways that didn't expose us, our own work immediately, but just sort of our thoughts about other people's work, and then went deeper into our own work. It really has helped me r refine how I look for news. I felt like... I could become a better researcher. That's just the real power of doing the story circle is that, you know, you, you have all these great perspectives. And we now have a more narrative culture among our coworkers. The net result of the training is what we call narrative culture, groups of people who now speak the same narrative language of the ABT, as described by Jeff Morissette, who ran a circle for USGS in Colorado. So the aha moment, I think, for us was realizing that by going through the story circles, we created a little network of people who kind of could speak the same language. I think you call it the culture. You create that culture, and it's really kind of small, tight-knit, sort of like... Um, collaboration and friendship or you know you've got the person that then you can say now I've got four people that when I'm submitting an abstract and it's a quick turnaround it's due tomorrow is you send it to all of them and you say can you guys check this out and they can say a little much on the and you have what's the Dobzhansky template you kind of just have this this efficient way to really break down but you really got a group of people that can help bounce ideas off of and communicate better. The ABT framework is now spreading at least two scientific journals have incorporated it into their writer's guidelines, and the National Park Service recently released a 50-page report that presented the ABT twice and used it to structure their case studies. Between Story Circles demo days and the actual Story Circles, we've now involved over 1,000 scientists and communicators from government agencies, universities, and corporations. One of the most important resources emerging is the Facebook group we've created for graduates of the full 10 one-hour Story Circle sessions. I said in the beginning that narrative is everything, and it is. It's been the most important thing that I've learned in my 40-year journey from science to cinema and back. I've gotten at least a little bit better with narrative, and you can too. And you need to, because trust me, in today's information overloaded world, narrative is the key to being understood. To learn more about this, read Houston We Have a Narrative, or visit our Story Circles training website.